how would you implement a thread safe hash map without using concurrent hash map well emphasis actually asked this hi guys welcome back to my channel java interview buddy in this video i am going to share some real interview questions shared by one of our subscriber his name is arvin so arvin recently faced an interview at emphasis and he has around 7 years of experience he shared all the questions with us so in this video i will go through each question one by one and explain them in a simple way so if you also faced any interview recently please share your questions with us you can fill out the form in the description also if you want to get the interview preparation kit you can grab your copy from the description box all right so let's start the video our first question is log says out of memory error how would you investigate how to answer this you can say that first check where the memory is going heap or meta space or direct memory then capture a heap dump open the heap dump in a tool like eclipse mat or visual vm then look for large collections class loaders or objects retaining too much memory check recent code changes for unbounded lists maps or caching also verify jvm heap size gc behavior and memory trends for monitoring tools and this way you can answer this question by the way these kind of a questions already available in my interview preparation kit so if you want that you can check the description now moving to our next question explain the internal working of a thread pool executor and how it manages task in its different states here how you can explain it in the interview thread pool executor maintains a core pool of workers threads when task comes in it first assign them to idle core threads if all core threads are busy task go to the queue if the queue is full and threads are below the max size it creates new threads if both are exhausted the rejected executor handler gets returned each worker takes task from the queue and execute them in a loop finally shut down and terminal states control how threads stops gracefully so now moving to our next question which is how would you analyze and fix the memory leak in a java application now to fix a memory leak in java application first reproduce the scenario so the leak appears consistent and collect heap dump at intervals compare them to see which objects keep growing identify the root causes like static references unclosed resources or large caches fix the leak in the code and then redeploy finally monitor memory after the fix to ensure it stabilize all right so that's how you answer this question now moving to our next question which is how would you implement a thread safe hash map without using concurrent hash map this is a very important question here how you can explain this so one simple way is to use collections dot synchronized map it wraps a normal hash map and adds a lock around every operation another way is to use a custom wrapper with your own synchronized methods you can also implement segment level locking to reduce contention internally you maintain multiple small maps and lock only the segment you need this improve concurrency compared to full map locking now the interviewer may ask a follow up question that how would segment locking improve performance if you know the answer of this question you can write down in the comment section as well or i will share the answer in the comments and pin that comment as well moving to our next question which is describe a scenario where a microservice might fail how would you implement the circuit breaker pattern to handle failure and maintain system resilience microservices can fail due to network issues timeouts overload or downstream unavailability of any microservice so when repeated failures occur the circuit breaker move to the open state in open states all requests fail fast without calling the downstream after a certain time out it goes to half open state to test if the service is healthy or not if it is successful in that it moves back to the closed and resume normal flow we can implement this using libraries like resilience 4j or hystrix so this basically prevents the cascading failure and improve system stability as well moving to our next question which is how do you handle distributed transactions in a microservice architecture explain the concept of the saga pattern now this i have discussed in multiple of my interviews and here if i need to answer this i will tell you here how you can answer this question so in microservices we avoid long acid transaction across service instead we use the saga pattern which breaks the transaction into small small steps so each steps is handled by a separate service if any steps fails compensating action roll back previous steps as well so saga can be implemented using choreography or orchestration choreography means event based or orchestration means there is a central controller 
to control all the events. Basically, this keeps our service loosely coupled while maintaining data consistency across multiple services. So I hope you got the idea how to answer this question next time. Now moving to our next question, which is describe how you dockerize a Spring Boot application. What were the steps, challenges and benefits of moving a containerized environment? Guys, questions in this interview are not for the beginners. Basically, if you worked on Spring Boot, Docker, these things, then you can able to answer this question. And suppose if you have those technologies in your resume, this video will be very helpful for you. So if you need to answer this question, here how you can describe it. Here you need to basically dockerize the Spring Boot applications and you need to also tell the steps, what steps you are going to use, what challenges you have faced. So first, when you deploy any application on the Docker container, first you create a Docker file with a base image like, like OpenJDK. Then you will copy the jar file into the image and define the entry point. And after that, you build an image using Docker build. Then you have to run it locally to test everything. So one challenge, I guess you can tell that uh, reducing the image size. And for that purpose, you can use slim base image. So the containerization helps basically with the portability of any application. Is it, it is easy for the deployment and across multiple environment, it will be consistent. So in the, in the interview, you can tell that First, I will create a Docker file with base image like OpenJDK. Then I will copy the jar file into the image and define the entry points. And after that, I build the image using Docker build. And then I run it locally to test everything. And as a challenge, you can tell that one challenge I faced was reducing the image size. So I switched to a slim base image. And this containerization helped with the portability with the easy deployment and with the environment consistency across multiple environments. And guys, if you face any interview recently, please share your questions with, the, with us. Uh, you can fill out the form in the description. And if you want to share your name or if you want to be anonymous, it's your choice. I will share accordingly. Now moving to our next question, which is your Spring Boot application is experiencing performance issue under high load. What are the steps you would take to identify and address the performance? Basically, it is a senior role. So that's why most of the questions related to either performance based microservices or challenges or deployment. So suppose your application has very high load and it is experiencing performance issue. So now to solve that, what step you can take now to answer this, you can say that first I will check logs and monitoring tools to find the slow component. For example, monitoring tools like uh, Splunk, I will check Splunk for the logs. Grafana, I can check for the logs. Then I will analyze thread uses, CPU heap and uh, GC activity. And then I will use profiler tools like J profiler to identify bottlenecks like uh, slow queries or heavy loops. I will also check database connections if they are saturated or not. Then if there are multiple DB queries in our system, I will optimize them as well. Then I will review the pool size of thread pool size if we are using thread pools. And suppose there are multiple connections, multiple repeated requests which are happening. So that for that purpose, I will use caching as well. Finally, I will run load tests and verify that my changes are going to perform any improvement or not. All right. Now coming to our next question, which is how would you design a system that supports different payment method like credit card, PayPal, cryptocurrency using interfaces and abstract class. So here how you can explain it. So I will create a payment interface with a common method like process payments. Then I will create classes like credit card payment or PayPal payment, which implementing it. And if you need shared logic, you can use abstract class like base payment class that will create each payment type implement its own processing logic. And then we have our client code. So the client code only depends on the interfaces. So adding new payment option becomes very easy for us. Basically, we are following open close principle of the, those solid principle. So as a follow up question, interviewer may ask like, how would you add a new payment method without modifying existing classes? So if you know the answer for this question, you can answer it in the comment section. There is a Java 8 feature for that actually. You can mention that. All right. So let's move to the next question. How would you structure your package for maximum efficiency and maintainability in a complex project? Guys, this interview is having multiple system design questions. System design questions. So if you prepare answer for these questions, questions like these will be asked in multiple interviews recent days. So it will be very beneficial for you 
to clear any round of your technical interviews if you are preparing for the companies like IBM EY or any product based company as well because there they ask multiple system design question so it's better to prepare question like this so here how you can explain this in an interview so a good approach is to structure packages by features or modules not by technical layers for example user payment order or notification as a separate package and for each package contains its controller then its services then its repository so this improve readability and reduce coupling as well between those modules so it also makes the code base easier to navigate for large teams so in microservices this aligns well with the domain driven design we call it domain driven design so according to your project you can add more details as well in this answer so i hope you got the idea how to answer this question now let's move to the next question which is what are the some best practices for managing transaction in spring boot application spring boot and transaction that means a solid question and you need to give a solid answer to that so to answer this question you can say that i will use at the transactional annotation so i will use it at the service level and i will also keep the transaction short to avoid locking issues and then i will avoid calling any remote services inside that transaction and i will also use proper isolation level based on the business needs so then i will carefully handle the rollbacks as well and i will handle checked and unchecked the exception as well then i will test thoroughly the entire critical flow i will test it thoroughly based on the uh, that behavior of that transaction so these point you can mention in this answer so i hope you got the idea now let's move to the next question how do you handle schema migration in a project using spring jpa when the schema changes due to business requirements now to answer this question you need to understand few things like what is schema what is migration and how to use D spring data jpa and here how you can explain it like there are multiple tools available like flyway liquid base and these tools are used for the database migration and we need to write certain script migration script for adding or modifying tables then we need to update the jpa entities to match the new schema then we need to run migration as a part of deployment pipeline and we need to make sure that it also backward completable and this keeps the schema consistent across all the environments all right let's move to the next question which is what what strategies do you use to motivate your team basically this interview is for the senior role so that's why they have asked this question there are multiple things you can tell in this uh, answer like if you are managing team and if you are applying that kind of a role handling while handling team you may have faced a lot of challenges and to overcome those challenges you need to like motivate your team as well so to answer this question you can say that uh, i start by giving clear goals to so everyone knows what uh, success looks like i appreciate good work publicly and feedback i will give privately and make sure people get task aligned with their strength i encourage learning and give space for the new ideas as well basically i hear everyone and regular one to one helps helps me to understand challenges early like whatever challenges the team is facing and why, why would i do such thing because a motivated team performs better and it grows faster all right so this is our scenario based question now let's move to the next question which is describe a project you led that was particularly challenging what was your role and what are your outcome so again this is a very person specific question any person who's handling a project leading a project basically this is for that if you are such person this answer will be very helpful for you so here how you can answer this first pick one project where timelines were tight or requirements were unclear then explain that you coordinated with teams clarified requirements and broke task into multiple phases so you ensure code quality with reviews and testing and you handle blockers by discussing them early with stakeholders with client basically so the project was delivered on time and solved a real business problem also mention how the team appreciated the clear directions so now let's move to the next question which is what are the key benefits of microservice architecture over monolith architecture i have di discussed this question multiple times in my multiple videos so most of you are already aware about the answer i will repeat just for the new guys who are watching the, my videos first time so you can explain it like this so microservice let you scale each service independently so teams can work parallel without stepping on each other work 
and deployment become faster and smaller in scope and failures are isolated to a single service suppose one service is failing so it remains to that service only it won't affect the other services and there is a technology freedom as well which allow using the right tool for your each service so one service you can use different technology and other service you can use different technology so this this flexibility is provided by microservices and it is easier to maintain and evolve the system over time all right so let's move to the next question which is based on the core java now interviewer is asking some of the core java question as well the question is can you explain internal working of hash map in java very simple question for a seven year experienced guy i will quickly tell you the answer how you can explain this in your interview so hash map stores key and value pair in a array called buckets and each keys hash code decides which bucket it goes in and if two keys lands in the same bucket they form a link list or a tree structure when a list becomes too long it gets converted into a balanced tree for a faster lookup so during put method hash map calculates the index checks for the duplicate and insert or update the entries during get method it finds the bucket and searches the list or tree for the matching key when the size grow of that hash map beyond that particular threshold hash map resize and rehash entries now a follow up question may be asked like what happens internally during resizing so i have mentioned the answer in multiple of my videos you can comment down the answer as well i will also mention the answer in the comment section in the pinned comment so that was all for the, this interview i hope these questions and answer will help you a lot because most of them are scenario based questions so if you like this video make sure to subscribe the channel and share with your friend share it with your friends as well who are preparing for the interview and don't forget if you want to share your own interview questions or your own interview experience you can fill out the form in the description and there is an interview preparation kit as well available in the description you can check that out as well and i will see you in the next video thank you